Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone, I'm Matt from MJOG, and today I've got my colleague Brendan, who is our customer engagement manager. Um, he's sitting right there, and on the questions we have got Fraser, who's our flagship manager, and he is going to be taking questions and answering them at the end as well. So if you have any questions about Desktop GP, make sure you put them in the question panel. And if you are a practice who has Desktop GP funded, which is pretty much everyone on the call, then you can download it through the link in the chat. Let's um, let's get started. So this is what we're going to go over today very quickly. What is Desktop GP? How can you get it? A live demo from Brendan. The pricing structure, like I said, many people on here have already got that for free. And um, a quick recap and then a Q&A. So relatively short, relatively quick. I'm not going to take up too much of your busy day. So what is Desktop GP? Desktop GP is MJOG's toolbar. So it's up there in the top right. This is our very latest version. It's just being deployed today into testing. So that's quite exciting. Um, and Brendan will be able to show that off. So from a messaging point of view, Desktop, is, Desktop GP is designed to make messaging individual patients really easy. You can send an individual message and a series of messages to a patient. You can in initiate a video consultation and it also integrates with Footfall. We know that lots of practices use that. Zoom, Whereby, and Skype, and a couple of others as well that I've got to mention on there. So um, lots of integrations, meaning that you can use the video tool with an existing provider to keep your cost down. And then there's the inbox. So the, the inbox is focused on ease of use for the individual patient, and um, that is continually being in, um, improved. So great to know. Here are our very latest screenshots. Um, the toolbar hasn't been changed on these ones. So we're ready to, um, no, they're looking much better than that, what they did. Lots of improvements have been made and we'll be showing you these uh, very shortly. So video consultations and then the new inbox um, and that one there, very easy to code, very easy to see the autoresponder in there as well. And so how can you get Desktop GP? So Desktop GP is free for over 500 practices at the moment with MJOG, closer to 600. Um, most people that are on the call, pre-invited and pre-approved to join the webinar, you already have Desktop GP available for free um, at your practice, most likely. So if you head to the link in the description, you can go and download it. And we'd absolutely love your feedback on Twitter, um, on the Facebook group, um, wherever you, it, you can give it to us, we would love the feedback. So um, please send it our way. The link's in the chat. And if you want to start playing around with it, um, then do so whilst Brendan's giving his live demo. Over to you, Brendan, and I will um, share and swap screens now. Okay. Coming your way. Power, absolutely. Just make sure I send the right screen. And that's going to be this one here. Superb. Can anyone confirm that that is a Windows desktop? That is. That's an Emis web. Excellent. Superb. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone. Oh, hi, yeah, Brendan here. We might have spoken before about various things. Let's get you a desktop GP installed. The easiest way to get this done will be to go off to a web page like the one that Matt has put in the chat. Another memorable one, mjog.com slash download. Okay. That will send you to here. And there are two buttons here that do exactly the same thing. We've got download now, download now, and we've got a much bigger click to download. Both do the same. They will download you a little icon down here, but for Chrome anyway, open and run that. One of two things will happen. It'll either just sit there and find all of your MJOG in one go and just present you straight away with a toolbar. Alternatively, depending on your systems, it may ask you for a address for your MJOG system. It might not be able to find it automatically. If that's the case, in your own MJOG, you get into your normal everyday client and you've got that address bar at the top right there. That's the information desktop GP will want. You can copy and paste that into the prompt it brings you up. And then it'll say it's successful and it's ready to go. Let me just quickly log into EMIS for a moment. If I open up, it'll get, also give you some desktop icons. You'll have an MJOG login one, which will just be another link to your normal MJOG front end. And you'll have MJOG desktop GP. 
Once installed, here we go. We've got our main toolbar, just as Emis pops up. That's actually quite handy, helps it stick out. Uh, to those of you who may have used this before, you'll notice it is a bit larger. So it doesn't get hidden quite as easily as it was. You'll want to log in first, though. It won't send or do anything until it's got your credentials in there. I click on one of the buttons, it's going to give me this login page. OK, you've got an MJOG login. Brilliant. Whatever one you've got, put it in there. You're cooking on gas. Let's say you don't have one, though. If you don't have a login at all, well, create an account. It's going to want your details in here, so let me just put something together here. Is that in jog test? Uh, uh. I just have to make sure I'm spelling this right, because what this will do, it's going to send me a uh, registration email to the email address I put in here. So I put the wrong one in, I'm going to be in trouble. Training at mjog.com. Of course, that's the address if you need any bits and pieces and help with other such bits. Make sure your details are correct and create an account. That should now mean, any moment soon, I'm going to have a login appear. I certainly will. I'll have one appear in my inbox. Indeed, that just this second landed, and it sent me an activation code. Let me just grab that. So, training at mjog.com was the username. As requested, activation code from the email you've been sent. And we'll get a little breakdown of what all these different buttons do. So, in fact, it breaks it down just up here. Login, we've already done that. That's going to turn into our inbox. We've got a button to message a patient. For those of you who will have it, there'll be the video consultations as well. There'll be a little bit more to do to get that up and running. But let's focus on the text side of it right now. And more brings us up some extra options. So you've downloaded it, you've installed it, you've set yourself up a user account, which by the way, will work in desktop GP and the usual MJOG client. So let's send some messages, shall we? Uh, we need to make sure we have a patient open in the clinical system, whichever one that happens to be. Again, I, yes, I have EMIS here, but it's the same with system one open up whoever's the patient you need to contact. And well, we've got a button here to send a message. Second one in, that's gonna open up a little window. And we've got some choices from here on in. We can send our messages either through something like Web Messenger, when that becomes a uh, public release. We have normal everyday text messages. You'll also have, say, smart messaging if that's on your accounts. And from here on in, your message goes here. And you clean up all your typos before you hit send. For when you hit send, it will do exactly that. You may want to code this as well. When you're writing a message from scratch, it won't know what kind of code to use. So you would need to add those in, whether that be SNOMEDS or the System 1 read codes. Of course, we can have templates. And if there's interest in that, I'll absolutely take us through putting those templates as favorites in these lists. It'll come with some already in there, such as attachments and these desktop GP ones. And these are fairly generic, but they fit the bill for a number of courses. Please call, dear whoever you are, please call the practice on number at your earliest convenience. Again, build it up, hit send, and that'll be down to the patient in a moment or two. Another button we have here is, of course, this inbox. Unlike the inbox in your normal MJOG system, 
this is a filtered inbox. This will only show, I'm just replying now so we can get the one down. This should show you only replies to messages that you sent from this user's DGP. So you don't have the crossover of all your appointment cancellations or responses to your campaigns. This is only going to be what, if it's one of your doctors, they've sent a message, they only get replies to the messages they sent. They're not having to filter through the lot. If you have had a message come in, there's going to be a little uh, roundel up on this. There'll be a count of how many you have waiting. I'll just sit up in there in that inbox. Much like with the rest of MJOB, we can, of course, do things like send attachments and we can do photo uploads and such the like as well. It's difficult to kind of show that one in a webinar because I'll need two phones going at the same time and to show the both screens and so forth. It, it could get messy. So I apologize for not showing you that one. But in a nutshell, yes, send yourself or send your people to mjog.com slash download. Download that uh, small program, fill in their details to register a new user. They will receive the registration email, use the activation code in there, and they are up and running. Up and running. You don't need to do any more with them than that. Depending on your IT setup, then it may be that your desktop GP toolbar auto starts each morning. I can't guarantee that. That, again, depends on IT setups. If it doesn't, you will, like I said, you will have an icon created when that install and runs. So, yes, you'll have that one to fire up in the morning and an MJOG login one, which will get you to your main front page again as well. Now, if there's any questions coming in about these kind of things, uh, Fraser, Matt, if you've got anything which uh, people are asking me to have a look over, then if you just um, briefly explain, Brendan, the uh, the um, the way that we set up the video. I think people are used to, um, you know, I'm not looking for a demo of how to set this up, by the way, just a rough overview of how people set up the video solution, how you can integrate with partners. What's the kind of rough, quick process of that? Okay, yes. Uh, this, this is mostly doable by anyone who has an MJOG administrator model. Okay, you're going to have to do a little bit of work in settings if this hasn't already been put in place for you. In our main interface, we're in here. And inside there, we're going to have to go to two areas. The first thing is we need to have a template which we will send to patients that has the link to get to the video consultation. The other part is we need to make sure your account is provisioned correctly. Now. Let's do the provisioning piece first. That's going to live in administration. In amongst all your account settings. About your connectivity. There's going to be an ID here. Now, if that's already in place, brilliant. You're already cooking on gas with that. If you do not have that present, then your account manager or support will be able to provide that. If that's already in place, then yeah, we don't need to do anything more with that, but we do need the message. So, messages. The many message templates. And of course in here, you've got all your appointment reminders and your campaigns and everything else. Go and download some templates again. So we've got our MJOG template library, covering all the different topics. You may have seen this before when finding campaign messages. In appointments, video consultations, these are all the different providers that we uh, support. So it might be you're setting up through a different channel like Zoom or Zoho or something like that. I'm focusing more on our MJOG one here download those templates that's it super that's the setup done so we've got wonderful. pardon i said wonderful that is, yeah, and that's um the obviously the choices of the provider there and obviously the mjog uh, video one so thanks for that we had a couple come in um one from uh matthew white um asking 
the desktop GP bar is a lot smaller on your computers compared to your PC on our computer. So compared to your PC, can this be adjusted? So, um, you know, coming very, very soon, Brendan, I believe. It absolutely is. So you are absolutely right. Yes, the current version that's out there has got the same color scheme, but it's somewhat smaller. And we immediately realized that that needed adjusting. So this is coming down in an update so that, yes, you have a larger toolbar. I mean, the functions exactly the same. It's just literally the, how it's presented. Um, oh, we can spot there as well. I've had a reply. Uh, as we can see, we've got a count on my inbox and there's a reply that says filters on it. So there we go. Gives you the full back and forth of who says what to who. Yeah, I just wanted to show that off while we're in here. But yes, no, this uh, larger version of the toolbar is coming to you all. I'm pleased to say. Absolutely wonderful. The um, So yes, uh, Matthew's come back. We have the new one. This uh, particular one that Brendan's showing off right now has um, only just been released this morning. Um, so this is even even newer. So we only had the green light this morning to show off this new version on the webinar today. And we'll be hoping to push that live to practices as soon as possible. So um, yeah, it's a very highly requested update that you know that will be coming soon, um, you know, with, within the next few days and um, early weeks. So um, that will be out to you as soon as we can, Matt. Certainly shall. So there is a request there of um, as well, you know, still quite small. So that is something we're looking into, you know, something scalable. Um, and that is with the product team. It is being explored to see if that is something we can do, um, you know, to see if we can make that, you know, adaptive on size. But, um, you yeah, know, that's a work in progress and it has no timeline at the moment. Um, one for you, Brendan. Uh, Sean's asked, will the update be automatically applied? Will that be pushed to all sites? Will they have to re-download? <laughs> I believe that's going to be an auto update because when you actually start up desktop GP first, like first thing in the morning, it'll do a check for new versions. Indeed, when you first download it from the website, it might even pick up a, the update right there and then. Uh, so that should look after itself. You shouldn't have to do anything with that. Wonderful. Um, and one from Monique. Um... She's asking, uh, what's the difference between the send via app and the send text? So without going too deep into um, into smart, let's um, okay. have a little look see yeah. there. Messages open here. So you've got your normal everyday text messages, which we're all familiar with. Uh, it's text. You type it, it goes. Of course, we have MJog Smart, which is supporting the MJog Messenger app. Uh, whereby patients receive their messages to an app, and then that removes the messaging costs from your invoices. Uh, sending text may well have a value attached to that in some cases. Uh, so those groups who have got the smart provisioning on your accounts, then the more patients who've got it, the better. Uh, that said, we have, of course, Web Messenger, which we'll be doing more of when we've got that fully running. Uh, with that in place, you will still create messages as if they were going to go to a patient through the app. I'm going to put up something like this. It's just that instead of them getting it into this app, they're going to get a text, and that text is going to tell them that they have a message waiting for them, and that message can be as long as you like. So without going through the whole web messenger side of this in, in its entirety, your text can be so long before they start costing double or three times as much to send. And there is a cutoff point where you just cannot put any more in them. But these kind of messages through Web Messenger or the app, they're infinitesimally long. Okay, there's, that's a lie. There is there is a cutoff point, but it's- I think it's about 300,000 characters, isn't there, or something like that, but that's a pretty much an essay, which no one wants to receive anyway. This is it, if you're sending something that long, it's a good chance that won't get read, especially well, to the end of it, at least. But yeah, that's the plan of it. So well, I've got this open here. So when you're using the Web Messenger or Smart and you're presented with this slightly different looking uh, starting point for your message, of course, Smart um, text, sorry, just looks like that. Blank page, nothing there. Messages through this channel, it gives you a base template to work with. So where we've got type your message here, well, 
your message goes here. Brilliant. Thanks, Brendan. Um, just a quick one to kind of follow in on that one. Um, one from Sarah, um, basically asking, can you, um, I'm not sure if Fraser might have answered it live in the, in the chat, but can you, if you just go over it, does, um, is there a way to have it so it always opens up with uh, text would then switch to smart or does that do it per patient? Um, it, it determines it per patient, I believe, doesn't it? There's a degree of it as per patient, absolutely, because at the moment with Web Messenger not kind of fully released, it's not a big shout out. So I'm kind of muddying the water. Sorry about that. Uh, but if the patient does not have the app, then it's not going to even talk about that. It's just going to put you straight in here and you're making text messages. Brilliant. Thanks, Brendan. Um, questions coming in thick and fast. Another quick one from uh, from Sarah. Um, essentially, if you, also if you don't enter a code for the text message, does the message still go into the patient record? So essentially, if you don't put a code in those written into EMR bits, will the message still go in? Here's it the question. does not. It does not. Now, let me try and show you a way. I was going to get onto this at one point anyway, but this is all about having favorite templates again. Um, the system won't take a guess. It won't take a guess at what codes it's going to put into the clinical records of your patients for reasons I'm sure you can understand. You don't want the wrong ones going in. That doesn't mean, however, that you will have to start adding snow med codes each and every single time because that will get old fast. When you have all these different templates, and including the ones we've already put into your system, you can add as many or as few as you want in our message section here under this now reply section. And I've got a whole bunch of different things here, but I'm just going to build something new and we're going to put some codes on it. So add template and a new one. All those A's, pin it near the top. There it is. Okay. First, I need to actually make a message. And I've got two different channels I could use here. Smart, but let's do text. Uh, message in this box. I used to be able to type really well. Yes, we can build a message and then we can save that and use it time after time with whatever wording. But what you're asking for there, Paula, this top section. In here, we can fill out which code we would want to use when that message is sent to the patient. Indeed, you could even have just, you know, a, a generic uh, message here. And then you have your own kind of base template, as it were. Brilliant. I think that that's, that solves the... To a degree. Solves that. To a little bit. Just remember, two more things. Use messages comment is your friend, because then whatever's in here ends up in the comments of the code. And once you've saved it, at the moment, this won't help you. You need to do the last bit. This little down arrow, favourite. With that done, I should now be able to send Giza Good Test a text called a. Oh, it's of course it's not come through on this user, is it? Because I've got a different one. But yes, there will be a drop down in there. <laughs> Would be. There'll be a drop down in there with your new template in it, and that will then auto fill all the coding. And if you need to tweak the message, you can. But other than that, it's all set to go. Superb. Um, we have a lot of practices um, with using, well, that we have smart funded. Monique's uh, asked, um, is there a way within the practice that so they can actually remove the smart app option and just use sent uh, text messages? So they kind of turn off the smart channel. Is that uh, is that a possibility? I think that's a, we'll maybe get back to you on that one. I think that might be a better idea for that one. Yeah, I mean, because... The system will show smart, um, whether it's kind of enabled or not, as it were, uh, because it's part of your subscriptions. It's something you've got and you can use if you want it to. Now, if that's becoming more of a bind because you're not using it that much, then, you know, I'll have to have a look at that one. Um, yeah, that, that's a longer question. No worries. We'll come We'll come back to that one after the webinar. The um, Another question uh, coming in here about... 
my fire, firewall was blocking the download and it asked me for the URL or for MJOG. Is, that is a common occurrence with IT systems, I believe. I fear so, yes. Um, if it's blocking the download, uh, I can't help with that one. Uh, it's because essentially all of our links end up in the same place whether you go through the mjog.info one or if you go to the others then that's how that goes through uh okay yeah and when it asks for the url of your mjog system um again that's just the main address at the top of sorry let me get rid of that that's the main address at the top of your main client Okay, that also helps to answer um, Adam's question, saying that there's a pop-up that comes up saying you didn't enter the correct address. Please copy the MDrog address from the browser URL and try again. So it is, it is that address that you're looking for that's highlighted right now. That is it. Yeah. So you're on your home page. Just grab whatever the address is there. If it's not finding that, then yes, you've got some um, security features which are preventing that from doing its job. Yeah. No problem at all. Um, Quick one um, that will be interesting to look at. The uh, the three little dots, what do they do? These ones here. Those well, ones there, yeah. They open you up some extra bits. So recent conversations is essentially your inbox in a different place. We've this got- should also help to answer uh, Dimitri's question. Sorry for jumping uh, in. I don't know. Um, how much you're using it, how many videos you've done. We've got a section called notice board, which is, kind of similar to your chat messages in your clinical system really is just based out of mjog and dgp and our help section lives here as well along with a long logout button but uh yeah, you don't want to use that <laughs> brilliant wonderful um so julie um is having trouble again downloading so that's a system administrator unfortunately julie if you um get in touch with your system admin they should hopefully be able to unblock that for you um Lorraine has asked, is there a way to change the name of the number sending text to patients? So say we would like ours to say Belford Medical Practice instead of a mobile number. Um, not, not at the moment, I believe. Um, the, the problem can be in many cases where, because it won't just be your particular site there, it'll be the people in that in your same CCD as well. And so we changed the name would have to be something which encapsulates you all uh so it'd be a ccg name probably uh which may not mean much to your patients just putting that out there uh it will also potentially be i've heard this before it can be a problem with doing replies now for those of you who don't want replies then that's not a problem but for those of you who use things like text back cancellations for your reminders or responses to your recalls and campaigns and such where you want them to message back that can be problematic with that. Uh, currently, when the patient gets a message in their phone and it's got a number, then they can react to that as if it's any other text message. Uh, okay, wonderful. Um, just a very quick one. Um, Dimitri's question, um, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Um, could you dig in, have a quick look at the usage statistics uh, if possible? This one's probably going to look a little bit shy on statistics because it doesn't get a huge amount of use. It is my test one, but let's have a look. There okay. we go. So so. Very, very bare at the moment. However, um, Dimitri, we are working on a, a dashboard that essentially will show up in desktop GP, and um, that is also available at a CCG level so they can view how many practices and what their usage is, etc. So that's currently in development. Um, jumping quickly on a one, sorry, Brendan. Bear in mind that this is usage for this particular user as well. Yes. So it's not everyone practice wide. Yes, that, that, that is coming with our new dashboard. Um, but in, like you rightly said, in desktop GP, it is for that individual user. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, one from Sarah, they are currently, uh, using a popular, uh, booking tool for COVID clinics. Do you have an appointment booking system integrated with this? not for covid i think is the kind of short answer for that we obviously integrate with the uh, you know with emis and uh, system one but at the moment we do not have a uh, a covid booking solution you can use our covid uh, resource pack which con contains all of the templates that you'll ever need um however it doesn't manage the uh, the vaccination booking however given that you know at the moment vaccinations are uh, you know up to three or four months apart um you know there's the, the main benefit really 
is um, and you will see essentially the, the same level of usage and uh, benefits by just using EMIS and uh, MJOG normal appointment reminders. Long but short answer at the same time. <laughs> So yeah, for those who are interested, I'm just having showing through a couple of the examples in our library of some of the templates we put together, which sites like yourselves have come to us saying we need to send stuff like this. So we put it together, we plonk it into this uh, library, and then any and all can get hold of them. We'll have made them for normal everyday text message, and we'll have made them for the app as well. So that covers all really is. Okay. Um, we've got a question from Dawn um, and another one just coming in from Nashaba. Um, question from Dawn's a bit technical, so I'll ask you to follow up that at the very end, uh, Brendan. And um, one from Nashaba is, I've tried to a few patients, the message that came back as the selected patient is not available. Um, how do I resolve this? I think <laughs> a very technical one. Should we, should we follow up afterwards as well? That sounds because that's going to be an issue between the systems and locating things like NHS numbers and such the like. So I think that's a support ticket job for that. Yeah. Yeah. And then another question come in from Arbab, which sounds like another support issue. What I'll do is I'll, um, if you can hand me back control, Brendan, we will, um, you what know, move. Final, what was that final question we had? Another, they're, they're all support related. They're all support related. The okay. Okay. Well, let me give you some of this. Yes. Brilliant. Thanks very much. All yours. So let's um let's have a look see. Um we will go back to the screen there. And Brendan, can you confirm you can see that? I can see that. Wonderful. Um, so it's quickly on to uh pricing. Uh, there might be some individual sites um in here in, in our attendees. So there's over five or 600 practices that we have pre-invited to the webinar. So if you are here, it is probably free um, for you. So do try the download link and do that. And um, if you if it's not, then you're not one of those 500, 600 sites, then the pricing of desktop GP is free for all CCGs, PCNs, federations and health boards at the moment. Um, so speak to your CCG, um, ask them to get in touch with us and it should be relatively simple. And for individual practices not funded by a CCG, um, it is just £10 a month per practice. So very affordable. And that works out at less than one pence per patient for an average practice with 8,757 patients, which is the kind of growing average, which is um, quite scary, really. That's a, that's a lot of patients. So I know that practices, some practices have over you know, 20, 30, 40,000. So yeah, lots of work there. Um, <clears throat> quick recap then. Um, so desktop GP, it's an individual messaging and video. It bolts onto the top of MJOG and it's free for the majority of those on this webinar. And you can get it from that link in the chat there. It's mjog.info slash DGP download or mjog.com slash download. Um, two very handy links there. Um, any final questions, whack them in um, now. Otherwise, we will give you half an hour of your day back. think we're likely out of questions there so if you do want to download um head over to mjob.com slash download there's a really handy easy to use link there and any questions and feedback most importantly please send it our way on twitter and um that is wonderful for anyone who's about to ask in chat or otherwise yes we'll process this into a little video and get it up on our youtube channel uh i'll try and get that done later on this afternoon um, and like while you're there uh, like share and subscribe definitely well thanks a lot for attending if you haven't got desktop gp yet you can go grab it now send us feedback on twitter facebook group as well um it is free for most practices so head on over and grab it and we just really welcome your feedback Thanks very much.